Well, hello, welcome back. Do you hear the ice cream truck? Nice try, not gonna get me today, well maybe later. Uh, I took a week off, my body needed a full week of recovery. My back, my, just, I overdid it. I did, that week I did four runs, did boxing, did strength training, and I need a little bit of a break. So hopefully it pays off. Remember the, the rest and recovery is where the, the investment is made, where the dividends are paid, where you recover and evolve and get stronger and heal. So feel good, week off. Um, we got 90 seconds of running, 30 seconds of walking for eight rounds. So I'm gonna try to be smart about it, knowing 30 seconds isn't a tremendous amount of time. I'm gonna shoot for an eight minute pace, nothing crazy. I'm gonna try to be a little bit more opt, more realistic, so optimistic. And uh, we'll check in when it's done. I'm excited to get back to this and get that after run feeling. I'll catch you in a little bit. Post run reflection. So I was trying to think a little bit during what I can offer value afterwards. And I also realized if I'm pushing myself too hard, that's why I don't really think about anything but the running and when is this over? So I did a fine line between pushing myself, but also just enjoying it. Cause isn't that the whole point? Like we do do things that are hard that challenge us that improve us, but we don't need to, to suffer. This last week was so good for me mentally and physically just reconnecting with myself and controlling anxieties and just trying to chill. There was a good book by Joseph Wen, I believe it is. NG, I'll, I'll post it. Uh, don't believe everything you think. And just how ego and the mind and thinking and creating goals from inspiration versus desperation. And um, it just was really good. It was really good for me mentally and physically so trying to enjoy this more and the only reason the whole suffering is all in our head we can control a lot of it we control how we react to things and so if i'm disappointed with my running or my pacing like just why why remember why are we doing this where am i at we're doing it that's huge it doesn't have to be perfect what is perfect doesn't matter so long story short just ground yourself and, and find peace and if you get peace from crushing it running super fast every time then that's cool but i have a hard time not letting that affect me if i don't reach my goals or if i don't get progress in my speed every time too hard on myself but uh, anyways i was thinking about just the importance again of recovery and the other thing is if you're doing this like me where you're returning to running from an injury or a surgery or just getting into running for the first time this is where having a buffer or not having a, a schedule like not having a race in the books to just amplify the anxiety and the, I gotta get this done, I have to get this done, I can't take a week off, how could I possibly take a week off? Not having anything in the books recent or in the near future is so helpful. So just say, you know what, I'm gonna take a pause, I'm gonna take a week, it's, I'm just gonna shift to week five, back a week, and just pick up where I left off. If you have a race in the books, there's that stress, but you gotta put your body first and your ego second and, uh, and recover. I do think I got my goal of around an eight minute pace. I'll post that here. Uh, in the beginning, it was a little bit faster and I started to chill and hit some hills and some were uh, above the eight minute. And I pushed myself towards the end, uh, round seven, round eight. And I think again, like I've said before, the most important thing is I'm trying and my heart rate will reflect that. It's the BS meter. I was redlining towards the end. I was 185, 186 beats per minute, which was near 100% of my heart rate max. So. As long as I'm, I'm pushing it, the pace will come secondary. So that's my, my wisdom for today. Hope you enjoy, hope you're doing well, and I'll catch you next time. It's Wednesday, treadmill. We got nine rounds of 90 seconds of running, 30 seconds of walking. I'm going to try something a little bit different. Instead of keeping the same pace the whole time, I'm gonna do a progressive increase. I'm gonna start at what I've been getting outside, that eight minute per mile pace. I'm gonna start at 7.5 miles per hour. And then each round, I'm gonna increase by 0.1. So then I should end somewhere around 8.3 or 8.4. And uh, and yeah, that'll be good. So that's the goal, slowly increase. We'll see, ideally my heart rate response should be something that slowly, uh, gradually increases, not only each interval, but over the totality. And uh, we'll touch base after. So that was the strategy, that was it. Uh, good news, I'm starting the podcast up again, and I think my first episode is going to be about gears and pacing, 
because it's so important. It helps so much, it makes or breaks you as far as pacing and when or if you hit the wall and feeling successful and pushing yourself in progress. So, uh, so stay tuned for that. But, uh, but that was a better strategy of starting at a speed that's challenging, but not out of my comfort zone too much and slowly incrementally increasing. And what you'll see with my heart response is that it did slowly start off lower that 30 seconds uh, heart rate does come down pretty quick but then as the intervals went on my heart rate started to get higher and stay higher and even the rest it started to stay pretty high but came down just enough for me to feel like recovered enough recovered and that's the good thing about this too is having these short little intervals your body will start to adapt and recover faster too um but anyways, that was good. You'll see my heart rate is slowly increased each interval and then over the totality of it ended at 8.3 miles per hour. And I got a little aggressive for the last uh, last one, went up to 8.5. But uh, the other way I was thinking about it is just mentally preparing for like each interval, thinking of it one by one. And then also preparing and thinking, okay, the last one, nine is not gonna be bad because I'll have adrenaline going. I know it's my last one and interval eight's gonna suck just know that and that's okay and just going into it with that headset with that mindset that space helped so much and it really wasn't that bad it's never as bad as we think it is right so that felt good i like that i think i'm going to continue with that slowly increasing and just setting more realistic goals and setting myself up for success that week off did me a lot of good mentally and physically so i will catch you in the next one for 10 rounds outdoors and we'll go from there. Don't be fooled. Not a treadmill day. It is so nice out. It is like 80, 80 degrees or 78 degrees. It's cool. It's 7 p.m. I'm driving to a trail, a greenway, to go run, to get my run in, to get the last one of the week. 10 rounds, 90 seconds of running, 30 seconds of walking. I'm going for standard issue eight minute pace is uh is what i'm going for that's exactly what i got last time so keep it in mind if i can keep that pace average for an extra round progress and bonus if i can get uh a little bit faster but i'm going to try what i did on the treadmill of doing uh starting off l lighter or less intensity keeping a lot left in the tank and then just slowly, incrementally increasing a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and do the negative splits where each one's a little bit faster. So that's the goal. I'm gonna keep in mind the leaning, the pushing, just focusing on my breathing and try to knock this out of the park. I'm feeling pretty good and I will check in after. That was good. I, I think I got my goal of under eight minutes. I did my best to try to slowly increase the effort as it goes on, but I'm still trying to get better improving at actually pacing out because some of my first few were well under my goal of eight minutes, but I was checking the heart rate. I have my Apple watch on my left wrist, just looking at the heart rate and just the, uh, the Garmin on my other. And I'm just constantly just seeing, or there's only kind of one number you need to, to know about. And I'll talk about this in the podcast too, but kind of knowing at what range do you know that you need to walk after that versus want to walk? I'm going to talk about the three gears, gear one, gear two, and gear three. Ideally, I'm starting off around a gear one to 1 1.5 and then slowly increasing. And I'll talk about it. your heart rate is such a better representation, more accurate representation of your effort and where you're at and how you're doing versus pace. You know, with heat, with hills, for you to maintain a pace, it can be all over the place with effort and having to work harder versus not as hard versus hydration levels. There's so many factors. So your heart rate's a more true representation. And that's when you'll know when you hit that, that wall, that lactate threshold. And I'll talk about too, once you do hit that wall, I have an analogy with a boat, just like how we propel forward with the mechanics, putting the paddle in the water and pushing back is how we propel forward. But with my example of pacing and fatigue and uh, byproducts of aerobic exercise, you'll get some lactic acid of the water that splashes back in the boat. And the boat, there's somebody in the boat that's pretty good about getting the water out so you don't sink. 
but sometimes as you get closer to that wall you hit a point where you sink and there's too much water and you can't get it out and then you have to like completely stop what you're doing reset empty the boat versus if you can kind of keep it before that point you can manage it a lot better so i'll talk about that more in the podcast and heart rate is super super helpful and valuable for pacing but that's all i got for today it's been a good week just feel better overall hope you guys are enjoying hope you are participating uh if you haven't noticed i've been posting a link to a blank um spreadsheet that has all the times and paces and intervals that you can follow along appreciate you all so much i'll see you next week week six let's go time's flying by huh i don't know about for you but uh i can't believe this is almost already halfway there so what does this mean we're adding some 15 seconds more of running as you can imagine and we're keeping the walking the same at 30 seconds so this could be a minute and 45 seconds of running 30 seconds of walking for eight rounds last time last week at this point i was eight minutes right on the dot is the average so that's going to be the the theme until we start getting into a lot more of the running and even less of the walking eight minutes is going to be the uh the goal for the outdoor ones for now see can i hang on to it can i maintain that with longer running and with just those 30 seconds short of of walking so i'm going to per usual paying attention to my heart rate trying with this new strategy of of negative splits and saving even more in the tank and slowly getting faster as we go working on my pacing i'm doing this outdoors on a relatively flat uh surface uh the greenway and i'll check in with you guys afterwards running economy running efficiency you've probably heard this term before I want to break it down and use an analogy that I've used before, but I went a little bit deeper and I'm hoping that you can use this concept and apply this into everything that you do. Hopefully it's relatable and hopefully we can, I can successfully get the point across. So what's the zoom out analogy? You're paying off a mortgage. You have a payment, you owe money, you're expending money. That's your form of payment. Each time you pay, there's a percent that goes towards the principal, goes towards actually reducing how much you owe. And then there's a percentage of that that goes towards the interest. Running is about moving forward. Moving forward is the goal. So when we're expending, not money, but energy, our goal is can we maximize payments towards the principal of moving forward and if it's not going towards paying on the principal and moving forward, it's paying on the interest. It's unnecessary. Can we maximize paying on the principal and minimize payments on the interest? Let's zoom in this a little bit closer. Let's dissect running into one individual step. Translating body forward, one foot to the next. The payment. The payment is the muscles. This is where the energy is exerted. Then we have payments towards the principal or payments on the interest. Again, the principal is like the mortgage, the house going forward. Our goal is to maximize everything that when we propel, how we move forward, maximizing horizontal and minimizing vertical. That's going to be the interest from here. So of that payment, part is going towards the goal of the principal moving forward, part is on the interest. And then no matter what, we still have to pay taxes. Every time that we land, it's impossible to not break or slow yourself down at all when we run. Every action equal and opposite reaction. When you land, that force is coming back up at you towards your center of mass. It causes some breaking, causes some slowing. The goal though is can we minimize? We have to have some payment but can we minimize the braking to maximize the forward momentum? So our, ideally, we're paying as low taxes as possible. And what's left, let's call this your running economy, your efficiency of forward movement. So let's say that you're exerting with each step, one step, 100 units, whatever that is, 100 units. Let's say 80 of that goes towards the principal, 
goes towards the mortgage, helping to move you forward. And then 20 of those units were going up. We're leaving the ground and moving up and forward as opposed to leaving the ground and moving horizontal and down. Then we still have to pay taxes on that. The ground is the form of payment. Ground reaction forces is GRF. Let's say arbitrarily 10 units is spent uh, taken away from the taxes. So now our running economy is 70 units or 70% with 30% of that going towards the interest. So here's where this actually boils down. This is where we can apply this concept to mechanics, training, the way that you move and working on reallocating resources. So ideally, here's your two different options. And you can do this immediately with the way that you run, the technique to change and improve your running economy, separate than how we train to try to even get more out of it. But here it is, you have options. Option one is running safer, which as a physical therapist, that's my number one priority. Safety above all, if you're injured, doesn't matter how fast you are, if you have to shut it down, you're injured, that's the most important. So can we lower effort, less exertion, even less force, but still maintain the same speed? How do we do that? So in this example, if we're paying $100 before, 70% is going towards the principal, 30% is on the interest, and we're at an 8.30 minute per mile pace or 5.17 minute per kilometer. What if we can spend 90? So we're spending less each step and we've improved the, the ratio of the running economy of 80% now is going towards the principal, only 20% reducing some vertical, reducing the ground reaction forces, the taxes by leaning, which I'll get into another post. And can we, we spend less and maintain the same speed? Ideally, if we can not sacrifice speed at all, but do less work, less exertion, less forces, our chances of overuse or too much too soon gets better. Here's where a lot of people love. How about speed? How about to run immediately faster? We can exert the same effort, still spending $100 before 70 going towards the principal, 30 going towards the interest, that 830 minute per mile, or 517 minutes per kilometer, or what if we can spend still 100, but now we're reallocating resources to 80% going towards the principal, and only 20% going towards the interest, now we're at an eight minute per mile clip or pace, and or a five minute per kilometer. So this is what it's all about. No matter what, it's impossible to have 100% efficiency, but the goal being, can we maximize payments on the principal, moving forward, minimizing vertical, minimize the taxes, the ground reaction forces, and how do we do that? The first one, paying more on the principal, push with the tush, using the glutes, using the hips, to when leaving the ground, pushing the ground purely backwards, not down and backwards, but backwards, the resultant movement is going forward. That's that paddle analogy, paddle in the water, push water back, move forward. That's how we can maximize payments on the principal. And then how do we minimize the taxes? That's where it's all about the lean. Where is your center of mass? Where is your body weight? Hinging at the ankle, the ankle, shifting your center of mass forward within your base support keeping it constantly there, we approximate, we bring where you land and where your center mass is closer together and we'll maximize for momentum and minimize braking. Keep it short and sweet. I think I got close to my goal. Might be a little bit slower, but what I wanted to, to focus on, a little piece of value I wanted to share, was a little bit more about the leaning. I did a post recently about downhill running and I want to just clarify some stuff and thankfully some people point some things out and I can see how it was misconstrued. I talked about in general when we come to a hill we want to conform our lean to match it. If the incline is going up we want to lean into it. If it's going down because of gravity we want to lean back. But here's where the 
misconception came. I did say when going downhill, lean back. That's true, but it doesn't mean lean all the way backwards. And what I mean by that is baseline when we run, there should always be a forward lean, always, never straight up and vertical. But when it comes to going downhill, we do lean slightly back, but we're still relatively lean forward. We're not straight up and down. So having your body loose, not fighting the hill, using the hill as a lactic recovery, let an active recovery, let the momentum take you, be loose, and your lean becomes your throttle. If you want to speed up a little bit more, lean forward a little bit more. If you want to slow down, lean back, but not all the way backwards. The last thing we want is your feet to get out from underneath you and you fall, so safety above all. I hope that was helpful. We'll see you next time. Oh, hello, Wednesday nine rounds. How are you? We've got a minute 45 running, 30 seconds of walking for nine rounds, but on the treadmill, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. So I was thinking, instead of doing like a faster or gear two pace and then walking, I'm gonna try a slower gear two pace and then pull back to a slower kind of gear one pace or base pace, you could say, and uh, do an active recovery. So example, before I was doing, let's say an eight minute or eight mile per hour average and then walking at three miles per hour for the walk, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like a, maybe a seven mile per hour for the minute 45. And then instead of walking, pull back to 5.5 or six miles per hour and try that. And we'll see what happens to the heart rate. We'll see how the response is. We'll see how far I get total, but just a slightly different, different strategy instead of just the running faster and walking. And we'll see how it goes. Ultimately, the goal is to just challenge myself, get my body used to handling impact, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. I'll touch base afterwards, and then as always, go over the old heart rate response. See you in a bit. Oh dear. I feel like I say that after every workout. Look at this sweat. Look at that one spot where there's no sweat. Holy moly, so I like that, that's a different approach. Part of my learn to run club training plans, I incorporate intervals on two days where you're fluctuating between two different effort levels and speeds. And uh, what I've been doing, it more represents what Thursdays are like, where it's a gear three, running at a pace and an effort where you need to walk afterwards, and then repeating that, versus Tuesdays is more like today, where you're running at a pace or an effort, a little bit more than you're comfortable with, but you can pull back and still recover without walking at running at a slower speed. And so what's cool is with time, you can pull back and your heart rate can recover. And that speed that you can recover at becomes faster and faster and faster with time. So gives you a little bit of a mental and physical break, gives your heart rate a little bit of reprieve. And with time, it starts to become, uh, your heart rate drops even faster at faster speed. So I think what we'll see with my heart rate response, I forgot my Garmin, it's the first time I forgot it, but I used my Apple Watch um, and took pictures of the distance and, my average speed was 7.1 miles per hour, around like an 8, I want to say 8.22 pace or so. But um, but no, it was good. I did that, uh, 7.1 miles per hour, 5.5 miles per hour, and just repeated that for nine rounds. And my heart rate did what it normally does. Starts out a little bit lower, but then slowly creeps up to that, oh crap, pace where I need to, or get close to needing to walk in the 170s. And uh, yeah, I didn't peak. So what you'll see today is uh, less peaks and valleys of the heart rate response where it doesn't go quite as high, it doesn't drop as low, and it's more of the rolling hills, which there's also a lot of benefit for challenging our heart and our lungs doing this versus running really fast and then walking and repeating. So both are beneficial, improving your pace and getting your body used to handling impact. But, uh, but yeah, I really like that. I might continue to incorporate some of those efforts on uh, some of these days, particularly a treadmill where it's easier to control the speed. But uh, yeah, we're almost done with the week. We're getting a little creative here. Fun fact, today's gonna be marking the exact halfway point. After today, six weeks down, six weeks to go. Time is just flying by. But uh, you know, it doesn't look like it. It looks sunny in the background, but it poured here. Um, and it's still like scattered showers and it's 97 degrees and humid. So. I'm going to, instead of just waiting and delaying and maybe tomorrow, I'm just gonna get her done and um, do it on the treadmill. So I am going to combine Wednesday workouts or what I said before of kind of gear three to gear zero or running really fast and walking 
and running a little bit faster and then still running but running slower and continuously so that's what i did on wednesday this week so i'm going to combine the two it's 10 rounds the first five i'm going to do uh continuous i'm going to do 7.5 miles per hour back to 5.5 miles per hour minute 45 7.5 30 seconds of 5.5 miles per hour five rounds and then the last five rounds that's where i'll do the more traditional maybe eight eight miles per hour and then walk for 30 seconds i'll play it i'll play around with it a little bit but i'm going to combine the two to get best of both worlds we'll see how far i get uh wednesday when i did that approach i uh, got the furthest i've gotten so far so that felt good so I'll do that. As always, keep in mind my heart rate, uh, looking out for the 170. When I get to 170 is when I'm really starting to uh, need to walk, not just want to walk afterwards. And hopefully, slowly, incrementally, uh, heart rate goes up throughout the process and doesn't peak until the end. I'll see you after. That was good. I like that strategy. Of the 10 rounds, the first five, I did what I did last time, but I thought I did 7.5 miles per hour, but I actually did seven miles per hour the other day. So I went from 7.5 to 5.5 for five rounds. Heart rate slowly started to creep up. And then I did the old tried and true, run faster, walk. And um, yeah, I got really close to hitting my wall, but, uh, but I pushed it. So I like that strategy, just mixing up a little bit. It's nice to mix it up. Uh, afterwards, I did a little lift. I'm just continuing to try to uh, lose fat and minimize and spare muscle loss. So far, uh, and this is why the Hume Health Smart Scale is so helpful. I'm only down six pounds from six weeks ago or seven weeks ago now. But if you look, I've added, I've lost nine pounds of fat and gained three pounds of muscle. So. It keeps me motivated, keeps me going, but it feels good to be halfway done with this. Next week, I believe, is two minutes of running, only 30 seconds of walking, and uh, we're chipping away. I have the run for distance coming up soon, too, that I'll do, and uh, it just feels good to make some progress. I hope you're doing well. hope you're following along. Questions, comments, please let me know.